I've got code PO14 and PO24 that I'm going to be de dealing with in this video. Uh, PO14, PO24, this is a Cadillac SRX 3.6 liter, but this engine is in uh, various GM cars, um, like other SUVs, and uh, I don't know, this engine's in a bunch of stuff. But, alright, these are the codes, exhaust camshaft position, performance bank 1, ca uh, exhaust camshaft position, performance bank 2. And we're going to be kind of looking at why this might be showing up and how to deal with it. Um, I'm going to go in, in here and look at live data. This is a really cool scanner. It's really affordable compared to other high-end scanners. Um, I'll link this in the description. But it lets you do some really cool things. It kind of, uh, not really so much guess, but it allows you to, really, to make a really educated guess as to why and what is going on. But here in these valleys, I have... Okay, here we go. We have variances. What that, what the variance is looking at is um, we have the desired camshaft advance and the actual. So this is what the computer wants it to be and we have what it actually is. So for example, here's desired exhaust camshaft bank one and here's the actual exhaust cam camshaft position bank one. Um, so, let's go down here to variances. It'll be easier just to look at that data. But we can just show those. Now, the code is only for the exhaust, bank one and two. I'm just going to give it some gas and watch the variances. Okay, now as I give it light throttle, the both exhaust banks one and two have a pretty large variance value. I don't know if you saw that, but it, it went as high as six degrees. We're right there at flash seven. It seems like when I let off the throttle, it has a up to a seven degree variance. Like right now I'm on the throttle. When I back out, it spikes to four degrees and six degrees. It does look like the solenoids are kind of being lazy to control the timing on the exhaust camshafts on bank one and two. And it's most noticeable when I let go of the throttle, we can see that spiking. So uh, there's two main reasons that happens. Uh, so the first reason that you might be having these issues and these codes is that you haven't been keeping up with the oil changes. That can happen if you have uh, sludge or just dirty, thick, nasty oil. It can be gumming up those uh, solenoids and giving an inaccurate reading or not a reading at all. But in this case, it looks like they're just being lazy. They're not keeping up with the, the demands of the ECU. So we're gonna do two things. We're gonna flush out the oil system with some seafoam. We're gonna install new uh, exhaust timing solenoids or I think the technical technical term is uh, exhaust variable valve timing solenoids that's the full name of it so we're gonna replace both of them bank one and two flush out the oil change the oil maybe two times to in total and see if the problem is fixed all right so before I drain the oil I'm gonna go ahead and run some seafoam through it instructions say to run one ounce per quart of oil so this is a 20 ounce bottle a quarter of this bottle will be about five ounces so i'll just try and use a quarter of the bottle and that should be good i'm going to add this and let it run maybe drive it around do a couple laps on my test drive route and then go ahead and drain the oil All right, so the oil was pretty black, pretty dirty. Um, that was the aftermath after flushing it with the seafoam. Uh, oil life is sitting at 0%, so who knows how long it's been sitting there. So the maintenance obviously has not been kept up very well in this vehicle. Um, so before we move on to the second reason that these coats pop up, which is gonna be just faulty solenoids. Well, I wouldn't necessarily blame the solenoids, but it could be that they're too far gone from dirty and gunked up oil. So let's go ahead and check the variances just with the oil flush and oil, and, uh, oil change with a new filter. And I've noticed that the, there's the biggest variances with the quick stab of the throttle and quickly letting off the throttle. That's when you see the biggest changes. Like right now I'm lightly getting into the throttle 
And keep in mind, before we saw spikes of six to eight degrees, here's gonna be a quick stab of the throttle. Biggest I saw was 30 and four degrees. I'm gonna let off real quickly. Zero. Before when I would let off the throttle, that's when it would spike to the highest, which was like seven degrees. There's a quick stab. Ones, zeros, zeros let, let off, zero. Now I'm just gonna be playing with the throttle, give, give it a gas, let, on and off, on and off. I saw a three degree, but I'm not seeing anything near the seven degrees that I saw before the oil change and the flush. But still, it's obviously a lot better than what it was before. But even though it is better, we are gonna go ahead and change out the solenoids and see um, how much of an improvement it makes after changing them out. So bank one is a lot easier to replace. Bank one is gonna be the rear of the engine. If we're looking at the side here. Uh, passenger side is where all this is happening. And the exhaust is gonna be, they're almost on top of each other, but the exhaust is of course closer to the actual exhaust manifold. And the intake actuator is a little bit on the inside, closer to the intake manifold. Same thing goes for bank two. And bank two is gonna be a lot more challenging because it sits behind this giant mount bracket. And I'm gonna, it looks like I'm gonna have to remove this motor mount and this bracket, because of course the actuator or solenoid is once I unbolt it, it's going to want to back out and hit right into that big giant bracket. So, yeah, bank two exhaust over here is going to be this one where my pinky is pointing at. And the intake is this one. So just for like a little experiment, I'm going to go ahead and place bank one, put the intake back on, fire it up, and see what the variances or the differences in the command um, cam position and the actual okay so here we are back in the car engine running scanner scanning and so i replaced bank one because it turned out it was a lot easier to do that one first so i found this new it's not new it's a different layout to look at the data and it compares it better let me turn my flesh off. it's just uh it makes more sense to look at it this way and it reads it faster and it kind of saves it for a second so because before it would flash the, the variance, the degree, but then it would go away and you would have to have a quick eye. But now, whatever happens, you can go back and look at it. You have time to actually register the data before it disappears. So check this out. Keep in mind, if we place bank one, bank one is spiking to about two and a quarter degree. Bank two is spiking to about four and a half degrees. So the one we replaced is keeping up a hell of a lot better than bank two. It's almost half. Right there was three, but right there was closer to five. So bank two is really, really far behind. So let's go ahead and uh, just go ahead and replace that bank two. Come back here and check the data afterward. So yeah, bank one in the back is cake compared to doing bank two, which is in the front. Uh, bank one, you pretty much just have to remove the air box and the intake tube. Once you get that out of the way, you can get to bank one. But bank two, bank two is another story, okay? And of course, you gotta, you know, have the air box off. You gotta move this coolant hose and you get that out of the way. And once you get the coolant hose off and you remove the upper uh, motor mount, make sure you support the motor from underneath. Remove the motor mount. And then you're gonna need to remove this motor mount bracket the bolt actually bolts it to the side of the block the, it's all 15 millimeters and then once you get this big nasty bracket out of the way you have access to the bank 2 exhaust solenoid or actuator um, some people call them actuators I call them solenoids but it's right here once you remove all this junk you have a straight shot and you can replace it easily and it's just a 10 millimeter right there so let's get that swapped out all right the old one is out and the new one going in there we go all right here we are back in the car both 
exhaust variable valve timing solenoids have been replaced here we are looking at the data we got this cool little graph showing both of these sensors um, so what's cool is that it kind of scales itself before when it was peaking to like four or five it actually went up that high but now there's no need for it to scale that high on the degree it only goes up to three and they're both synced up pretty well now I'm intentionally trying to show a variance here and the most I can get it to show now is about two and a quarter degree that one was about three but keep in mind before we even changed the oil before we did anything it was showing about seven degree uh, variance so now we're changing the oil changing the solenoids we are not seeing anything greater than three degree variance right there is about two and a quarter yeah so it's real likely that this problem is going to be fixed um, I might even drive it around until those codes go away. Huge, huge improvement. I'd say that that's going to be within spec, and the codes should go away on its own. The checkage light should turn off uh, without even clearing it because the problem is fixed. Um, but this car does have an EVAP code, has an EVAP leak. It's actually saying uh, EVAP purge is too large. And if you want to see that video, that'll be a whole other video on diagnosing a bad EVAP perch solenoid. But if you like this video, like, subscribe, comment below. Thanks for watching. Later.